Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Super excited that you're here to see this. I have a brand new product from Blue Eddy. They sent out this PV200. Now, this is their brand new line of solar panels. This is a folding portable solar panel, and it is a 200 watt solar panel. Now, they do have some other solar panels, the SP series, but this one is pretty different. Now, I'm gonna talk about that later in the video. Let's go ahead and just take this outside and see what type of power we can get into our power stations. Okay, guys, super excited to do some solar testing on the PV200 today. We're also gonna compare this to a few other panels. Now the skies are pretty clear, really good day to test with solar. I'm going to test this with the EB70, the EB55, and my DIY lithium iron phosphate battery. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the testing. Okay, so with the PV200 plugged in, we're seeing 163 watts in on the EB70. That's the most I've ever seen using this power station. Okay, we're getting 163 watts input on the EB55. Okay, so we're getting 164 watts input on my lithium iron phosphate battery. Voltage is right around 18.3 volts and it's a little over 8 amps. So now we're going to test the Blue Eddy SP200. Now this is their previous generation solar panel. I have my EB70, EB55, and lithium iron phosphate battery. Let's go ahead and see what we're getting. Okay, so I plugged it into my EB70 and we're getting 73 watts input. I think I have an issue with this solar panel, guys. I'm going to have to reach out to Blue Eddy support. Okay, so I plugged it into my EB55 and we are getting 85 watts input. I have one other charge controller I'm going to test this on. Let's go ahead and see what we're getting on that one. Okay, so plugging this into my Blue Sky MPPT solar charge controller, we're getting 91.9 .9 watts. It's right around 17 volts and 5.3 amps. Now I've seen up to 168 watts on this solar panel before, so I definitely have an issue with this. Okay, so I want to test my two Elikanta 120 watt folding solar panels in parallel to see how they stack up against the PV200. Okay, so we're seeing around 157 to 158 watts with the Elikanta panels in parallel on the EB70. Okay, so I have them plugged into my EB55 using an Anderson to XT60 connector. And we're getting 158 watts input. Okay, the two Elikantas in parallel, we're seeing 196 watts. It's around 17.72 volts and 11 amps. Okay guys, we're out here testing again and I had a thought here. So this is a bigger panel. So usually what I'll do is I'll move the panel around to keep it out of the shade, but because it's bigger, you know, you might not want to move this around quite a bit. So I want to see how this performs uh, if it's partially shaded. So let's go ahead and see what we're outputting right now. It's a different day, so we'll have a little bit different power than before. And then we'll cover it up and see what we get. Okay, without any shading, I'm getting 147 watts in on my EB55. Okay, so I threw uh, this plastic lid on this last section here. So we have yeah, a little bit more than 75% of the panel showing. Let's see what happens. So with that panel covered, I'm still getting 120 watts input. Okay, so with that experiment, you can tell that each one of these panels are wired together in parallel. Now, there's a difference here. If, you, if this was wired in series, then they'd all be a chain together. And if you basically take the power from one, it all goes away. So this actually will do really well in partial shading. If this was wired in series, we'd see almost no power. You'd probably see like 10 watts coming out of it. So pretty awesome that a big panel like this, they planned ahead. They knew, you know, because it's so big, there's a chance it's gonna have some shade on it. And because it's in parallel, you still get great power output. Okay guys, we're back inside. What did you guys think of those results? Now we're gonna talk about two separate things. Let's talk about the power input, then let's talk about the shading results. So first off, we saw 163 watts in here and 164 watts in here. Now if you remember when I tested my SP200 before it was having issues on my EB70, I saw a maximum input of 142 watts. So just by using their newer panel, because the higher efficiency and higher voltages, you're going to see more power into these power stations. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the partial shading results. Now this fared really well when it was partially shaded and that's due to each of the panels being wired in parallel. Now the SP200 is different. Each of those panels are wired in series. Just so you know, this does much better in partial shading. So that's a huge benefit to this panel. Now let's go ahead and bring the camera in a little bit closer so you guys can see some of the build quality and other features of this panel. As for the folded dimensions of the panel, it's 23 and a quarter inches wide. It's 25 inches long with the handle included, and it's two and a quarter inches thick with the back pocket. It comes in at 16.1 pounds or 7.3 kilograms. 
Now the entire panel is covered in this really nice fabric. It reminds me of a really durable tent material and it has these cool hexagon shapes all over it. Now if you see, I can put water on it and it repels the water right away and the water does not soak in. So it does appear to be water resistant. Now the solar panel has two of these plastic latches to keep it closed. It's really easy to open it up. Now with this being a folding solar panel, most people that purchase this are gonna be thinking about a portable setup. And this is a pretty big panel. So having an included handle on here that's ergonomic and easy to grab onto helps you move this around much more easily. Now, I've always wanted a portable solar panel that comes with adjustable kickstands. And Blue Eddy has an awesome design here. Now there's three of these kickstands that have three levels of adjustment. Now these kickstands are super easy to use. There's a 45 degree mark that you put your little snap on and it'll set it to 45 degrees. If you need to change the adjustment either way, you have two other options. Now this is all so that you can point the solar panel at the best angle towards the sun to get the most power out of your solar panel into your battery. So on the back of the solar panel is this padded pocket. Let's go ahead and open this up with the two zippers. Now you can feel there's actually padding in here and I like how it goes completely out of the way. So right here we have the power cable for this solar panel and this is 12 gauge wire. So super heavy duty and it's about 10 feet long and it comes with these MC4 connections. So if your power station accepts MC4 connection, this will work great for you. Now I love how Blue Eddy does this, but they list all the specifications. So you don't need to carry an owner's manual with you. It's all on the solar panel. Now here's a closer look at the technical details. And there's a few things I want to point out. The open circuit voltage is 26.1 volts. So this is the max voltage you'll see. You want to make sure your power station will accept this high of a voltage. Now the next thing is to get max power. You look at voltage max power and the current max power and you times them together. So that's 20.5 volts times 9.7 amps. This will put out around 198 watts max. The final thing we'll talk about is this ETFE coating. So it's really translucent and it's very good against scratches and it doesn't fade when it's in the sun. So it won't yellow or anything like that. So pretty awesome that it has that coating included. So I laid this out on my table just to demonstrate how big it is. Now only three sections fit on my table. Each one's about 22 inches wide. So when it's fully laid out, it's a little under eight feet long. Now here's a closer look at the ETFE coating. It's super durable and it adds water resistance to the panel. Now I wanted to demonstrate how rigid this panel was. So I put a little bit of weight here in the middle and tried flexing it. Overall, it didn't flex very much, so it seems very durable. So I thought it'd be nice to put my PV200 up next to my SP200. So now the surface area on this is 22 inches by 20 inches. And on the SP200, it's 19 and a half inches by 19 and a half inches. So if they were the same efficiency, you'd see more power out of this one just because it has more square footage. Now they both have the ETFE coating, so very durable against scratches and water resistant. And this panel's definitely heavier. And so while I have these two next to each other, I was trying to think when I broke this panel. And I think I remember it last working when I connected it in parallel with two smaller panels. I was trying to get a ton of power together and I was actually reading the PV200 website and it had a warning slash disclaimer at the bottom of the page. And it said, do not connect this panel in series or parallel with other panels that are dissimilar, only connect it with this same exact panel. So it said it would cause damage if you did that. And I'm wondering if that applies to this panel as well. I definitely uh, connected this to a smaller panel and I think that's where I damaged it. Now, this is a good opportunity to bring up the warranty for these panels. They are expensive panels and they do have warranties. And we'll see if I can get this one fixed under warranty. Now this has a two year warranty. So you should have peace of mind that you can get this fixed if you have any issues with it. Now, where it's my fault, I hooked this up to a dissimilar panel and damaged it. I'm not sure if that will be covered under warranty. So just take it from me guys, do not hook these in parallel or series with dissimilar panels. You know, stick to this one panel or buy two of them and put them in series or parallel depending on what your power station can handle. Okay guys, we're coming to the end of the video. What'd you guys think of that review? Now overall, the build quality for this is amazing. It had really good output and we actually saw more power into these EB series than we did with the previous generation. So all good things so far with this panel. Now let's go ahead and talk about some other panel options just so you know you're making the right decision because this is a high-end premium portable solar panel. There are budget portable panels and then you have glass rigid panels that are much cheaper. So let's talk about those three options. So 
is your setup gonna be sitting out 24 seven, 365 is gonna be in all different weather conditions, you know, sitting out in the sun and roasting it every single day. You're not gonna to wanna to go with a portable solar panel like this because they're not designed to be in the elements all the time. They're not fully waterproof and you're gonna start seeing fading and damage to it if it's just sitting in the sun all the time. So if you have a permanent solar setup, you're gonna to wanna to go with a glass rigid panel. Now, if you bought a 180 watt uh, rigid panel or a 200 watt, you're gonna be spending around a dollar per watt. So you're gonna get that for around $200. Yes, it's big and heavy. Yes, it's hard to move around. It's not very convenient, but you're gonna get a really long life and you're gonna have a panel that can sit out all the time. Now, if you're looking for a portable setup, like you're gonna be using for camping or emergencies just to use when you wanna charge one of these up and not sit out all the time, that's when you're gonna to wanna to look for a portable setup. So now you have a high-end panel like this, or you have a budget panel. Now let's talk about price on this. Now this comes in at $550. Now there is a $79 coupon available on Blue Eddy's website. I'll include that down in the description below. And you can get this for $471. Now this has a two year warranty, so you're gonna have peace of mind if something happens to this or if it ships out and you have an issue with it, reach out to Blue Eddy, they'll replace it. But now you have the question, well, do I just go with two you know, cheaper 100 watt panels and put them in parallel? Now the problem with that is you have to get adapters and you have to question, do those solar panels have warranties? Now, a lot of those budget solar panels, you buy them off Amazon. Sure, you have your Amazon return window, but the company doesn't really have a customer support and there's not really anything you can do to get it returned. You know, I've recommended those in the past because the price is so good, but you know, you might, if you want something that's gonna last longer or have the freedom of if there's an issue, you can get that returned, then you may wanna look for a more expensive panel. What's also nice about this panel is it's just one panel. A lot of times you'd have to buy two budget solar panels and put them in parallel. And with this, you just set this panel out and that's all you have to do. So there's a couple pros and cons you have to think about, uh, you know, cost and convenience, things like that. So hopefully you guys have enough information to make the decision on what works best for you. Now, I love taking a look at these solar panels and providing all this information, doing all the testing, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Please give me a thumbs up on the video if you like the content. And also, if you guys like power stations, solar panels, DIY projects, you may be interested in subscribing to the channel. So if I have earned your subscription, I invite you guys to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, throw a comment down below. I'll have all the information in the video description to purchase this solar panel. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you guys in the next video.